So I'm going to use this norm as uh, in, in the rest of the analysis. Now we should know where we are heading. We are heading towards a stationary point. If I'm heading towards a stationary point, what is the one of the qualities of the stationary point? How will I identify it? Grad F of X star should be zero, right? We had studied this right in the beginning that the signature of a stationary point is its gradient is zero, right? So let's keep a note. We should always know where we are heading. Otherwise, it just looks like random math, right? So at the solution, grad f of x star is equal to zero. Do I have an exp explicit expression for grad f? We do, right? It's simply qx minus b, right? So q x star minus b is equal to 0. Right, so this is just an aside that we will use. Now let's get back to what we are interested. What is the distance of the iterate from the solution? But we are going to use the q norm instead of the 2 norm. So what we need to compute is this. Right, so we will just plug in the definition of this norm. I am going to get x k minus x star. Uh, transpose q x k minus x star. Okay. If I open this up, how many terms do I expect? Two, four, six, eight. How many terms? Four terms. Right. We can let's explicitly open it up. X k transpose q x k is one term. Um, plus x star transpose q x star is another term and then I have the cross terms. Right. Okay. Let's keep in mind this expression over here. Can I simplify a few of the terms over here? No, I've just opened it differently. The first two terms are positive, the next two terms are negative, right? So do I see a QX star anywhere in this expression? Is there a QX star hanging out somewhere? There's a QX star hanging out over here. Is there a transpose of that hanging out somewhere? There is a transpose of that also hanging out over here. So this term is going to be B and therefore this is B transpose, right? If you take transpose of this expression, what will you get? You will get B transpose is equal to X star transpose Q. Q is symmetric, so Q transpose equal to Q, okay? I have this. Uh, anything else that I can pull out? Can I group some things common? I'm going to put a half over here everywhere. Can I identify, can I simplify this entire expression of four, four terms in terms of f? Can you see if you can identify an f over here? What was my definition of f? half x transpose q x minus b x. Do I, am I seeing those terms anywhere? Do I see a f of x k anywhere? What was f of x? Let's write that once again. Half x transpose q x minus b transpose x. Okay, now do I see f of x k anywhere? First term matches b transpose x k. Is that there anywhere? First and which term? Third term. First and third term, if I combine this is f of x k. If I combine term number two and four, x transpose k, sorry, yeah. So 
is have I made a mistake anywhere or it's okay? X transpose yeah okay. Term three and so this is B transpose X K and uh, okay. So have we made a mistake in algebra somewhere? One, two, four, yes. One, three, and Correct, half is not for the B's coefficient. Correct, correct, correct. So let's get this out. So half, okay, let's write this down properly. So I'm going to get half of XK transpose QXK and uh, B transpose XK and this is going to give me minus uh, B transpose XK, right? This is what I've got. So this is and what is left? Plus half x star q x star, right? This is what is left. Now, can I make somehow, um, can I introduce, can I write this in terms of f of x star by some algebra, by some clever trick? Is it possible? Yeah. So this is clearly f of xk, right? What about this term? Minus f of this term is minus f of x star. Okay. Why is that? X star, let's see that. X star is q inverse b. Therefore, okay. I mean, it is correct, but does, does everyone follow what has happened over here? How this became minus f of x star? So let's try to write it out a little bit more explicitly. We have, uh, what is the solution over here? Q x star is equal to b. Q x star is equal to b. From here, what do we do next? So x star is equal to q inverse b. Then. Substituted in the expression of f. Okay, what do I get? Do I get it? And then? I'll do the same in the first term, okay? So this is Q inverse B. This is, you want to leave it as it is? B transpose Q inverse transpose. Then, so the Q, Q inverse goes to identity, right? Then what does this become? Half of B transpose Q inverse transpose B. And then, and uh, that transpose? Q is symmetric, so I can get rid of this, right? And then I have a B transpose Q inverse B, okay? Then, and then this half and half becomes equal to minus half of uh, B transpose Q inverse B, okay? I'm still not there yet. I want this expression. What do I do next? Substitute, I can substitute B as Q X star, right? So now if I substitute, uh, B equal to Q X star. I'm going to get exactly this expression, right? Right. So little bit of algebra, right? But we we get this expression. This is uh, let's write this as an aside. So what did I, let's summarize it over here. Half of this distance, xk minus x star square in the q norm is equal to f of xk minus f of x star. Okay, yeah, question. The b xk, that's here. 
it had a there were two of them then they got multiplied by half so the coefficient became one the term number three and term number four these guys a transpose b is equal to i mean i can swap it b transpose a that's how i got this thing. so three and four combined into this and the second term is what needed a little bit of algebra to see it is actually f of x star anyone having trouble in this step So it's, it's if you write along as as you're watching this, you, it'll make more sense. Otherwise, it just looks like a bad movie. Right. So this is this is what you get. Now, uh, unfortunately, at this point, the proof is equal to pulling a rabbit out of the hat. There's a lot of hard work done by another uh, scientist. So I'm, we're going to write his name over here, Sir uh, Lunberger. who takes it from this point. So I've related the distance between two functions, between the iterate and the convergent point to the difference of function values. So that's a great simplification. And uh, Lunberger takes this further and says that, this norm over here is actually less than equal to This proof uh, is not going to be done in class, but we'll take it on faith. So after uh, relating um, this norm of the iterate distance uh, to the function values, this is what you get. Now what are, uh, anyone wants to guess what the lambdas are? Eigenvalues of Q, okay. These are the lambda i's are eigenvalues of Q. Okay. Uh, there is a similar question that you will also find in the tutorial about this. Um, okay. So now this is a very, very useful result because if I wanted to look at, if you look at the definition of uh, linear convergence, what was the expression that you had? What was the ratio that we had in when we spoke about linear, uh, linear convergence? The ratio of what to what should be less than something? What is it? It was xk, so let's call it delta x, k plus 1 norm divided by delta xk, right? Delta x is xk plus 1 minus x star. That's the meaning. Was what? Less than equal to r, where r was 0 to 1. Does it look like that? Does this expression that we have got, does it look like that? It does look like that. What is my r? Square root of this expression, right? Because I've got the squares on both sides. So r is equal to square root of this lambda n minus lambda 1, lambda n plus lambda 1. Okay. Again, just a quick uh, linear algebra refresher. I've called these the eigenvalues of q. If I call these the singular values of q, would I be correct or incorrect? Correct, because, because for a, not just a square matrix, right, for a positive definite matrix, so obviously which is also symmetric, the eigenvalues and the singular values are identical, right? so I can talk in either terms, okay. So this proves that convergence, we proved earlier that convergence happens and now we are saying that convergence is what, linear. Now this expression over here with the red arrow contains in it actually a lot of intuition. A lot of geometric intuition is contained inside it if you pay attention to it. So remember when we had drawn the zigzag contour of uh, the steepest descent trajectory, remember the zigzag contour. That zigzag contour had happened when I had an elliptical, elliptical cup so to speak, right. And we had said that. Um, the curvature of the cup is related to the properties of the Hessian. Second, deri second order derivatives gives me curvature information. Where is the Hessian over here going to, I mean, in this quadratic cost function which I have, the Hessian is going to be what? Q is going to be the Hessian. And what, I, what have I got over here? The R term, 
does it have the properties of the hessian it directly has the properties of the hessian the eigen values now if i had a square bowl or a square cup uh, in n dimensions what would happen to the eigen values they would actually all be the same no matter which way you approach from the direct the curvature is the same so you would have the same eigen values so that was actually a special case if i have a if i have circular contours right that means the the bowl is actually a, like a a circle in end uh, i mean a, it's a bowl in n dimension circular in cross section no matter where you start from you are going straight into the solution so you can see that over here lambda n is equal to lambda 1 therefore what it becomes zero right so the distance between xk plus 1 and x star becomes zero in one shot and this this theorem is telling us that so the curve and on on the contrary if i have a very squished cost uh, uh, i mean a very squished uh, bowl so to speak right like a very very elliptical thing then lambda 1 and lambda n are going to be very different so this r term is now going to become larger and larger right so that means your you may take many steps to arrive at it no matter how many steps you take the rate at which these steps are going to go is linear that is clear from this proof okay yeah that that's a that's a good point so this was proved under some very restrictive conditions the first restrictive condition was i assume quadratic cost function i assume convexity well that's okay i assume exact line search right uh so the question is will this work in general for inexact line search will it work for uh, non quadratic cost function uh as you will find out in the research literature people have proved that linear convergence happens even with inexact line searches but we won't do it here those proofs get more and more involved yes exactly. yeah yeah loons yeah. loonberger's proof is in the, in the line of this but there are several steps over here so we have just stated the final result over here but other people have generalized this and shown that even if you do it inexactly you will still get linear convergence <clears throat> it's not that linear will become sublinear or something like that. so this this expression that we have over here lambda n and lambda 1 uh, which could also be written in terms of sigma n and sigma 1 uh, when we were doing a review of linear algebra we had encountered these two numbers and what was that when did we encounter sigma sigma the ratio of sigma n and sigma 1 the condition number right so the condition number of q is 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 simply the maximum singular value by the minimum singular value which is simply okay so intuitively what is what what we are uh, sort of getting from here is that the worse the condition number worse means a worse condition number is a high condition number the best condition number possible is actually for the identity matrix which is 1 you cannot have a condition number less than 1 so the higher the condition number the bigger is this ratio lambda n to lambda 1 and this this constant over here is going to get larger and larger right as it gets larger and larger that means you may have to make more and more steps to reach here okay so this is the story with um, how the uh, gradient descent family of methods work they converge and they converge at a linear rate this convergence we have proven under a restricted set of assumptions but if uh, the class notes have proofs for the other uh, methods as well